Hey, what's going on? Ellis Williams here. I've got another instant analysis video breakdown for y'all. This time, two players instead of one. The Browns went defense on day two, landing Jordan Elliott at number 88, defensive tackle out of Missouri, and Jacob Phillips at number 97, a linebacker out of LSU. Those are the two players we're going to focus on here. First for Elliott, some things I like. This young man's quick in space. He wins in space, quite frankly. He had a 1.71. 10-yard shuttle, which I know it's not a time we look at a lot, but that's how you tell that this kid is explosive. He can beat the double team. He can get in the backfield. The problem is he just didn't show that enough, and I think there's an explanation for that. He faced a lot of double teams this year at Missouri, and that's really the name of the game. Sometimes it's defensive tackle. You take on the double teams. You take those hits so your teammates can eat. And I think that's why his stats were a little lower and why he slipped all the way to number 88 for the Browns. But they sound ecstatic, and the tape checks out. One more thing I like about him, he finds the football. 44 tackles, the most at Missouri since 2014. So let's watch some tape on Elliott here before we get into Jacob Phillips. This is the first play of the game against Ole Miss, and he starts the game off with a bang. He brings that energy right here, playing a three technique. And that's one thing that I'm sure the Browns liked about Elliott. Uh, 80 snaps in the A gap, 311 at the B gap, and then another 170 at a four tech, which is almost an outside position. So he's versatile. Here, he plugs everything up. I know it's hard to tell where he is, but watch the guy who comes up and is celebrating. Right there, number one, that's Elliott. He knows he just starts the game off with a tone. You're not running the football against Missouri. That's something he's going to try and bring to Cleveland, though I think he's going to end up being a better pass rusher in a pressure sense, not a sack number but it's his motor on this next play. Look, he takes on a double team right there. Let's run that back. Takes on a double team right here. And though he guesses wrong to beat that double team, he beats it. The play's past him, but here, look, the ball comes out. He notices it a little late, but then boom, fires. Trying to find that football. He's involved in the play. That's the type of energy you want to see. He doesn't stop. And that's what he's going to bring to the Cleveland Browns front. And Andrew Barry talked about how this is going to be a hockey team type setup. So he's going to be coming in and out. And when he comes in, he'll be fresh. Just like he was at the start of this game. Let's jump forward here a little bit right here for y'all. All right, right here. He's over the guard. Watch how his arm extends right here. See that arm extension, arm extension. He sees the fumble in the backfield and then he shoots. I do wonder why he wasn't trying to get to the backfield sooner. Um, that's something that happens, but look, he keeps his eyes in the backfield and reacts when he's ready to make a play. We're going to watch this one more time. Arm, one arm on, one arm on. He sees the fumble extended and then sheds. I like his awareness there. Again, I don't know exactly what he was waiting for, but clearly he was waiting for something and he was right. Missouri first forces a turnover there. Now some things I don't like real quickly. We're going to jump to one. 41 here right after this play and we'll just watch this in real time to a couple to we're going to see it replayed a few times here Ole Miss goes back to pass pass rush gets to him here comes number one Elliott and you don't really see it on screen there but that's going to be a late hit watch the replay here quarterback bails and the Browns fans do not want to see this they're sick of the defense taking penalties boom shot to number 10 the quarterback way out of bounds that's not going to fly in the NFL that's likely a penalty and that's just what you don't need in AFC North football. These games are going to be tight. They're going to be contested. And plays like this are going to get you on the bench with Joe Woods, I'm sure. I'm guessing he'll clean that up. But it's when your motor's going like that, that's, that's a tough spot to be in. But, again, it's something I don't like to see. The penalties, Cleveland fans don't need to see any more of those. One more here because I like his pass rush upside here at the 259 mark, I believe it is. Ah, uh, yep, that was the play. Let's run it back to the start of it. All right, here he comes. Right there. See that? He sheds. And though the quarterback completes the pass, uh, he's in the backfield dang quickly right there. And I think he, that someone got the flag for holding anyway. The ref was chucking this flag. So a lot to like about Elliott there. Let's jump real quick to Jake uh, Phillips. This one was a little more surprising, uh, a little less known. He played alongside Patrick Queen at LSU. So some could argue that. You know, with Queen, he may have been overlooked. And the other argument could be that he was protected playing on such a talented defense at LSU. Um, 
this one thing he doesn't have is versatility, 638 snaps in the box, and then he had a few all over the place. But really, he's a traditional middle linebacker. Long, modern, lean. He just turned 21 years old. He's a sound tackler, only missed five tackles and 97 attempts. Uh, and he's a straight light speed guy, which we're going to get into here in a second. Khan's kind of all over the place. He lacks cover skills. Again, I think he may have been hidden because of Patrick Queen. And he doesn't change direction well. So a few things to watch here on this first play. Let's get back to the initial snap alignment. He's right here, traditional middle linebacker. Doesn't move around much. You know where to find him. Right there. Look at him take on that block. He's fierce. He doesn't fear nobody coming up there. I'm going to do that one more time. That's an additional lineman in. That's not a tight end. That's a, that's a lineman. I think he's wearing 99. And though he doesn't make the play, he pushes him back. He wins that matchup. That's what he's going to do. Think uh, B.J. Goodson with a lot more athleticism. This young man is going to get after the quarterback when he's sent to blitz and knows how to find the running back going downhill. Again, we're going to watch this one. See, he's coming from the strong side there, but he goes on a blitz. And look at that, straight line speed, but then he doesn't change direction well. He loses containment. It's, you're going to have to play this young man situationally, but when he's right, he's right. And to wrap this up, I just want to show you a red zone sequence here that just really sums up the player he is. First and goal, and I'm pretty sure Auburn ends up scoring on this drive, but just watch how he's always by the football right here. Traditional linebacker, takes on the block, kind of finds the running back. He doesn't give up. All right, fine. That's a big gain, but he's always around the ball. Here, come, here he comes again. Reads it well, takes on another big block, and he gets pushed back there, but still around the ball. He's not afraid to take on these linemen. You see some linebackers who aren't playing that game. He gets dirty. I don't like the effort there, but they end up holding them. And this is the one I wanted to show you guys. Look at this. Just your classic over the top. He's going to do anything to sell out and stop it. I think he guessed completely wrong and Auburn ended up scoring. But the point is, he's going to be a guy who's going to stop the run first. And quite frankly, he's going to have to make a name for himself on special teams first before he probably sees the field. But Jacob Phillips is a guy with a lot of potential. Think Mac Wilson last year, honestly. And if he has to get his number called and play, his athleticism will stand out. I think they'll hide him in coverage, but he's going to stop the run. Bringing Jordan Elliott back into this all-American guy. I think he fell a little too late. And the Browns found a guy there who could potentially replace Sheldon Richardson someday. Both Mizzou guys, I think that's going to play out well for the Browns going down the road. They want to build the defensive line up, and that's what they're doing with that Jordan Elliott pick. Instead of addressing linebacker, they do it later and get Elliott at 88. A lot to like here. Again, Browns fans on day two. If you like what you saw, don't forget to sign up for Football Insider. Click the blue banner at the top of cleveland.com slash Browns. You can get exclusive texts from myself, Scott Pascoe, Mary Kay Cabot, and Dan Lobby. Check it out there.